Welcome to Get Lit. I'm Kate. And I'm Pat. And welcome to the Civic Center Library here at Scottsdale. We're here to share our beautiful library with you, as well as some services, books, and more that we're really excited about. And we think you will be too. So, come, come on, on in, in with, with us. us. Hello there, and welcome to another episode of Get Lit. Today, because of spring, notice, Kate and I are going to be talking about gardening, many aspects of gardening. We'll talk vegetable gardening, indoor gardening, uh, edible landscape gardening, all kinds of things to kind of pique your interest in what you can do this spring for your garden, inside or out. So, I have my garden gloves ready. Let me put them aside. I am a novice gardener. My husband takes care of the outside. I take care of the inside. But when I saw this book, Easy to Grow Vegetables, I thought I can do this. It's a wonderful book that gives essential tips, tricks, and techniques for growing dozens of your favorite vegetables, including tomatoes, peppers, beans, greens, squash, herbs, and so much more. This uh, book I enjoy because it has good pictures telling me what to do when. Here we go. First off, there's a whole chapter on how to arrange your garden, whether you be indoors or uh, in a landscape setting, or out back establishing a brand new yard. It talks about easy edible planning designs, even gives a guide of what different uh, types of patterns you might want to lay out so it's also aesthetically pleasing. It talks about building your better soil. And then the chapters include, as I already said, tomatoes, peppers and vines. Don't those look delicious? Growing your own green beans, root vegetables, and all the way down the line to also herbs. And I do love having herbs available for my cooking. One of the fun things about this particular book, I have a wonderful cookbook at home and what to eat when, what to eat when it's in harvest. So as my Swiss chard grows, I can look up recipes for that. When my tomatoes finally ripen, I can look up recipes for that as well. So this is a fun one to have, a good one to start with. And then my second book for this go around is Container Gardening. Uh, many of us have perhaps a smaller patio, smaller backyard, perhaps a deck off the condominium a couple of stories up. So you want to know how can I start out with container gardening, especially if I am, as I say, a novice gardener. And it starts out talking about the different types of containers available, from your stoneware to your plastic to metal, um, earthenware pot, whatever. Talks about choosing the right size for the particular types of plants that you might want to, or herbs or flowers that you might want to grow. Also around shapes, or what shape would be most aesthetically pleasing, and perhaps some shape better for certain root vegetables, uh, plants, and so on and so forth. First things first, the pot itself. And the reason I thought this was interesting. Plastic pots, terracotta, metal, wooden, etc. It gives the pros and cons for potting in each of those different types of, of uh, pots. For example, your metal pots, especially here in the Southwest, would get so hot that they could literally bake your roots. Terracotta, if it's glazed, retains the water. If it's not glazed, it allows the moisture to escape. Uh, plastic, wooden, same thing. Very interesting and I thought a very valid um, place to start. 
And then it just gives some great ideas how you could do a ladder garden. I thought this was fun. Recycled work boots. Uh, you know, add a little eclectic flavor, go to Goodwill, get the uh, work boots and off you go. A live palette wall and many other ideas. So this one, there's always room for a bit of greenery in your life and your container gardening will give you that opportunity. Kate, your turn. Well, that's all very exciting. You know, so many people that I talk to, both Pat and I grow things at home in different situations. So many people say, well, I don't have a yard, I can't grow things. And that's what we're, one thing we're trying to inspire you to do is to reconsider where you are and what you can do just about any place, indoors or outdoors, you've got some sort of situation where you can set up something that grows. So that's what we wanna get you excited about. My first book uh, group today is approaching it from, here we are in the Southwest. How do you grow things specifically in the Southwest? Now the Southwest, for the purpose of a lot of these books, is Arizona and all the way from Utah, Oklahoma, um, Nevada and uh, in New Mexico as well, but there are others that are just Arizona, New Mexico, Nevada. But one thing that we all know, especially when we live in Maricopa County, is that we are in a zone that gets a lot of heat and a lot of sun. And another thing that stays the hands of would-be gardeners is, oh, it's so hot here, how could I grow anything? I'm from a place where there are four seasons, and here it's not like that. But that's what these books are for. Basically, if you're in Maricopa County, you're in zone 9B. And um, so these books are all gonna get you confident with how you approach it in this zone. This is a lovely book, um, Vegetable Gardening in the Southwest. This is one of a couple in this pile that are very easy for you if you don't feel particularly confident or feel like a novice to begin with. Um, or are kind of lazy and don't have a lot of time to really delve in and become an expert right from the beginning. Um, it's, uh, it's basically tips for assessing soil. Pretty much you'll notice all of these have, um, they emphasize that you want to find out what kind of soil you have. Now in Arizona there's a lot of clay, but there's ways to assess what it is and what to plant, how to amend the soil, which is easy to do, depending on the kind of soil you have. Um, then basically, this book goes month by month. It makes it so easy. So it has at the top May, July, etc. And then in each section, you've got to do this month, what to plan, what to prepare and maintain, um, what to sow indoors, what to sow outdoors, what you'll be harvesting this month. So it's a, it, you can delve into whatever month you're in, ex for example, and begin. Um, also, it has um, edibles A to Z. So all the way from, let's say, arugula to yams, basically. Um, what, what you need to know about it vis-a-vis -vis gardening in the Southwest. Now, I'm going to step over and get my glasses for the rest of this. All right, here I am with my glasses again. Next, this lady, is um, Diana Maranao, and this is Southwest Gardener's Handbook. Now this uh, takes into account Texas, Arizona, New Mexico, Oklahoma, Southern Nevada, Utah. All of the books tend to have maps of the zones, and uh, all the way you'll notice when you take into account the entire Southwest, we have um, basically the lower the number of the zone, the colder the winters. The higher the number of the zone, might be the hotter the summers. You'll notice that if you take into account you got northern Utah, you're all the way at zone 3B, which is very different from um, 10A, which is parts of Arizona. So one thing about this book that you're not going to get is a lot of what to plant at this time of year in this zone versus that zone. So you kind of have to look into that yourself. You know, online you can find all sorts of planting and harvesting charts. You can find them all over the place. I'll show you that in one of these other books. Um, but basically what it's very handy for is different categories of plants um, done by color tabs. So you've got annuals for the Southwest, bulbs for the Southwest, edibles for the Southwest, and so on. It goes to perennials, it goes to roses, shrubs, and then even trees. So what this will give you is a lot of inspiration for the breadth of things that you can put your hand to. 
And um, next, you'll hear the name Mary Irish a lot if you're looking into books about gardening. By the way, the Dewey number for just anything about gardening in general, keep it in mind, 635. If you just go to 635 and browse, you're gonna find a lot of things, and a lot of the things will be by Mary Irish. Um, with this one, you're gonna to go to the bottom edges to navigate. Desert perennials, grasses and lawns, roses. A lot of emphasis on roses for people who think maybe you can't grow roses in the Southwest. Another thing that's very interesting that these books point out is every yard or little place that you have, your balcony is a microclimate all its own. So your balcony you might not be as 9B, say, as a west-facing wall outside. So what you need to do is not be afraid and dive in and find out what works in the place you have. That's why you gotta go in with no fear, okay? So this one, Arizona and New Mexico, Getting Started Garden Guide, has very nifty little icons that will tell you, for instance, is this a native plant? Will it give you fall color? Is it edible? Does it attract hummingbirds? Does it attract uh, butterflies and bees? And then is it drought resistant? And it also will tell you with the little handy icons how much sun it needs, which again, in your yard, you might have a bunch of different little microclimates where you can grow different sun loving or shade loving things. Okay, and then the last one in this group was my favorite, kind of an unprepossessing cover. Um, month by Month Gardening, Arizona, Nevada, and New Mexico by Jacqueline Soul. Jacqueline Soul has got degrees. I mean, most of these people do, but man, she's got a PhD. She got all of her, she had multiple bachelors of science in horticulture and in botany that she got from good old uh, U of A and other uh, Arizona colleges, also ASU, and then she went to Texas and got her PhD. So this lady knows what she's talking about, and what's so cool is even though she's a big scary expert, she puts this down for you so easily. This is the lazy gardener's dream. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because it's just month by month. So you open it to any month, and it's gonna tell you what what uh, lawn things can you plant? What perennials will work this month? What roses, what shrubs, what trees, etc. And with just little nifty sidebars that are good to know, like how to know if a plant is established. Um, and uh, for instance, to store summer blooming bulbs. So it's really a wonderful one to begin with. And um, I highly recommend this one. So once again, month by month gardening, Arizona, Nevada, New Mexico, Jacqueline Soul. And that's it for my first group of books. Pat, what have you got? Thank you, Kate. Well, as I said in my uh, introduction, my uh, husband takes care of the outside, though he does a good job with the garden. I participate, but I like my indoor plants. They're kind of like home to me and they belong to me. And oddly enough, it must have been uh, serendipity, there was an article in the Arizona Republic Scottsdale section just a little bit ago, House Plants for Your Health. And it says, a new study found that having plants at home had a positive influence on participant psychological well-being during the COVID-19 lockdown. Something of your own to take care of. I think that's probably the gist of it. So this little book to me would be the Bible for anybody. It's called Pocket Guide to House Plants. Over 240 easy care favorites. The only manual your house plants will ever need, Pocket Guide to House Plants, shows you everything you need to know in this I like. How to incorporate plants in your interior design with plant descriptions and complete growing care information for over 240 popular species from ferns and cacti to orchids and lilies. Find the perfect plants for any and every space in your home. So I did bookmark a few. One of the ones that I enjoyed was growing culinary herbs in your home. And they have a gallery of herbs, our favorite, bay leaf, rosemary, spearmint, basil, chives, oregano, parsley, uh, marjoram, etc. And it gives you a lovely introduction to growing herbs in your home, what kind of pot you need, um, 
finding the right container, very much like my original gardening book that I had pointed out. So one of the uh, plants that I find that you absolutely cannot starve, deprive of water, or heat, or whatever, it is a hardy, hardy plant, it's the pothos plant. I have a couple of these in my home. Uh, when I give a plant gift, especially to um, one of my kids that doesn't really tend to take care of their plants like your mother does, I usually buy them a pothos. It's a great plant to start with. This one is the variegated vein uh, pothos that adds a little bit of lightness to it, but it all, they also come in the darker green leaf and such. Does it matter? Yes, because certain places in your home may have a dark corner or not be as, as lighted up, um, especially if you're living in an apartment situation. So you want your light, your plant to bring color, just like you would your other um, decor in your home. Another one that I've always enjoyed, especially as a hanging plant, which was very popular at one time. Everybody had to have their macrame. I'm dating myself. But the spider plant, and that one too, is a pretty hardy one. And if one of the leaves tends to go brown or looks kind of scuzzy, just pluck it. Nobody's going to know the difference. Uh, but this whole book is full of wonderful plants, bamboo, butterfly palm, and it will also have a section on it then that, depending on what part of your home that you what what may be best in a bedroom or what might work best in a living room, what works best for a tabletop decoration, especially a dining room table. So a great little pocket handbook to house plants. There was also one on the shelf that I found quite fun, and it just simply hip house plants. Discover natural ways to create a stylish home with the ultimate living accessory for interior. Over 150 uh, commissioned photographs reveal the striking decorative possibilities of palms, lilies, orchids, bamboo, and many other plants. So definitely a go-to book. So, Maybe you have a house revival type decor. I'm just going to kind of randomly pull some pages up here, showing how you can do ferns and cactus. Um, perhaps for the living room. And here again, notice that she's chosen house plants that have uh, like an armorillus or something like that that has a lovely flower to it. And here are some wonderful ideas of the different potting techniques that could also add design and color to your home. So I would think, oh, pests and diseases, they're not totally the easiest to take care of, but it is doable. Anyway, I found this book to be a fantastic companion to the pocketbook of house plants. So check them out. I think you would enjoy and maybe find some house plants that you've never heard of before, but you can still get at Home Depot at a very reasonable price. Well, that's really exciting, Pat. <laughs> yeah, I've been focusing on just outside, and I always have been kind of afraid of trying anything mm -hmm. indoors, but you see, that's the purpose of this, is to give you ideas. So I've got some ideas now that I didn't have when we started, uh, when we pressed on. Um, the next little category I'm going to show here is sort of an overview of planning a garden when you hadn't ever had anything to begin with. Some of these books are a little ambitious, um, but it's what it kind of is. Um, this particular, now it's, again, the Dewey number is just 635. We want to browse 635. We cannot overemphasize that. And there's lots of them. Oh gosh, yeah. But this this idea is sort of approaching it almost like if you if you look at all our books in the 700s about home decor, home decoration, how to transform your house into a space that you love. This is the outside version of that. Um, for instance, starting garden. Let's look at this one. This is Easy Care Plantings. This is the Sunset Western Garden Book of Easy Care Plantings, and it specifically is the West. So this is not only our southwestern states, but all the coastal states, um, Washington, California, and Oregon. And it's going to show you, um, just to get you excited, pictures of gardens in places we know, like Tucson. 
Um, there is a Scottsdale garden, and these gardens look, you know, familiar to us. It's like, yes, we know what that looks like. It's a zooscape, isn't it? But then, you know, you're going to also see, you know, sweeping fields of dahlias in Oregon and lavender on the cliffs of Big Sur and that sort of thing. But then it goes into, um, let me show you, that in the table of contents, it's going to give you an idea how it's laid out. So it goes gardens, then beds and borders, ideas for plants that make up beds and borders, succulents, ground covers, container plants, and then just general tips. So the pictures alone are going to perhaps dispel your fear, I think, rather than awaken it, just because you can picture yourself being in this sort of Eden that you can create for yourself, just bit by bit. And then, just like having your home inside, looking like a, an oasis that you can come to at the end of the day and on the weekend, you can also make your outside into a, a sort of paradise of your very own. So remember, this is just the Sunset Western Garden, easy care planting, easy care, be afraid. Um, then this is another similar one by Sally Roth, Beginner's Guide to Starting a Garden. Again, in the huge overview sense, with tips about everything that we've been talking about here, soil zones and containers and raised beds, all sorts of things like that. Okay, so it's another 635. And then this one stood out to me by Gayla Trail, she's a Canadian. Um, it's called You Grow Girl. Um, she has a website also, yougrowgirl.com, that's been around since 2000. I like her approach here. Now you don't have to be a girl, um, but she's basically encouraging women, I would say young women, who haven't ever tried anything like this to grow something somewhere. So if you have a little postage stamp garden in a tiny little two square front area as you go into the place where you live, or if you can do a rooftop garden with some friends, or if you just have a sunny window, or if you have a little bit of a yard. Um, this goes from beginning to end, basically. It's a truly holistic approach to growing things for beginners and anyone seeking inspiration. So it isn't just, it does of course do the thing about zones and soil um, and composting, but also tools that you should own, um, projects that you can come up with for planting every project imaginable and care of your plants, but also recipes, and not just culinary recipes, though there are plenty of those, but there are medicinal recipes and bath and oh. beauty recipes. So it's really, really fun. And again, it isn't just for girls. Now, um, this is again, 635. Within 635, Dewey number, you get really a range of possibility. But anyway, once again, Gala Trail, you grow girl, and check out our website too. Right back over to you, Pat. All right. Before I go into my last two books, which I think you'll find, find kind of fun and different, I just wanted to comment to you a few things. First off, both Kate and I are talking quite a bit about planting gardens. Gardens take seeds. Now you can go to Home Depot or your Ace Hardware and you can buy seeds or you can visit the Mustang Library which has a seed library, uh, excuse me, uh, yes, a seed yeah, library, what am I saying? Seed library, where you can go in and you can check out a package of seeds and you don't have to return them, although if you grow anything, they might enjoy your zucchini or something as a thank you. Yeah. But this is something new to Mustang within the last few years. Uh, Laura Cooney, one of my favorite librarians, developed the uh, seed garden. It's very, very popular. Mustang is open again. So if you've got one of our books and you want to plant a garden and you need seeds, check out Mustang first. Also, um, at all of the uh, libraries, we have brochures to help you with your gardening. This one, landscape watering by the numbers. So you say, I've got a saguaro cactus, how do I water that? And I've got a petunia, and how do I water that? How much, how often, what time of year, etc. Excellent, whether you've lived here for a number of years or whether you're new to our community. Another one, xeriscape gardening. So of course, low water usage. You'll also find it is going to incorporate many of your native plants. So once again, 
we moved here from somewhere else, and we want cactus, and we want choyas, and we want whatever for color, and we don't have a clue how to water or take care of them. And this handy dandy book, Xeriscape, is just for you. Please do be watching in our library print catalog and on our online catalog. The uh, Water Department presents a series of landscape programs, and those will be featured on our Scottsdale uh, library.org YouTube channel. And they're wonderful, very informative uh, pro uh, programs about gardening in the Southwest. So, these I chose for fun. Some years ago, I read the most charming book, The Language of Flowers. And it's a lovely story about a young girl working in a florist shop and how she uses flowers to express herself. And the back of the book says, in Victorian times, the language of flowers was used to convey romantic expressions. But for Victoria Jones, it's been more useful in communi communicating mistrust and solitude. And it goes on to be the story of, Viol of uh, Victoria Jones. But within the story, working in a florist, she talks about the different flowers and what the flowers represent. I found it fascinating. I had no idea. So, as a wonderful bedside book, I think you would very much enjoy The Language of Flowers. But this one, The Meaning of Flowers, is a little bit more direct. And let me just read the uh, inside here. In many ways, nature's most beautiful works of art, flowers, have reigned for centuries as the message of love, gratitude, friendship, and remembrance. The meaning of flowers presents vivid portraits of blossoms favored throughout the ages, drawing on botanical, mythological, and historical sources worldwide. In Persia, for instance, the black medulla of the red tulip was said to represent a lover's heart burnt to a coal by love's passion. To Victorians, lavender signifies broken trust, hollyhocks, fertility, nasturtiums, a jest or whimsy, and then this book decorated with brilliantly colorful collages, The Meaning of Flowers, is a delightful exploration in the language of, and lore of nature's most beautiful gift. I just loved reading that book. So I went through, and oh my goodness, every page has a beautiful picture of flowers. So as I went through, I said, oh, when I was a little girl, I remember my father always planting pansies, so it became one of my favorite flowers, especially from my childhood. So I thought, well, what does a pansy mean? Um, pansies represent the thoughts of lovers shared before a word is spoken. I've lived all this time and never thought of my father as a romantic. And then another that I love is the sunflower. It just looks so big and brave and it's there and it, it expresses itself and it brings in the songbird. But I had never really known what it meant and I wasn't too far off. The sunflower promises power, warmth, nourishment, the attributes of the sun itself. In the Inca cultures of the Andes, the sunflower was revered. The flower's image was hammered into gold and placed in temples. And then once again, I just get all giddy when I go to the grocery store and I see, oh my gosh, they have daffodils. It says spring is on its way. And again, I wasn't too far up. The daffodil stood for chivalry in Victorian England, perhaps because it sometimes stood in the snow waiting for the rest of the flowers of spring. Isn't that delightful? So, that is my series of books for gardens.
Well, now because of Pat, Pat already inspired me this year. I grew, I'm growing sunflowers for the first time because <laughs> of you going on about how great they are, and they're already coming up. So remember, no fear. If we can convey one thing, they are. Today. Um, oh, here is an immense and growing subject of interest. Um, I feel that there's a lot of people turning away from what they think of as, you know, big pharma modern medicine and doing things more the folk related way and uh, herbal medicine and uh, naturalists all of this is growing and you can tell by the number of books in this particular dewey area that this is a booming area of interest to readers um 615.321 615.321 if you go to that dewey number and look around you're going to find so much stuff and it's really interesting even if you're like well of course i'm not gonna it's not saying don't go to the doctor anymore but it's very interesting to know that different plants can do different things and can help you in particular ways um, just medicinally and that a lot of these plants you can forage and find all around you here in the southwest um, i'm just going to show you there's this is the herbal remedies handbook which operates a bit like a field guide like when you look at field guides for birds and, and things like that. And it goes A to Z, red clover, cat's claw, you know you've got that in your backyard or your neighbor does, and what it can do. And um, then there's an interesting spot here where it names, alphabetically, different health problems that oh. we experience and what herbs or plants are used for that, and then a page number that talks about it in here. So that's one. Now, if you think that this is a, a foolish thing that's just for quacks, why, I don't think so, because look, National Geographic has their own book on this subject, National Geographic's Guide to Medicinal Herbs. And these are, of course, you know, nationwide, it focuses on, and, and also all over the world, what grows where. So it isn't so much focusing on the Southwest as some of these other books, but you're sure gonna run into things that grow here. And any of these books here are aloes, which we've known forever, are super healthy, used topically or even internally. Keep that as a house plant, because it's always handy when you accidentally burn yourself. It, yeah, <laughs> just break off a little piece and you're good to go. Um, most of these are really more for what plant does what, for what part of you, but there are some, and you'll find them, that approach uh, the gardening um, end of it and how to plant the different herbs and plants that can help you in the different ways. And then a lot of these books, too, are going to give you recipes sort of like the You Grow Girl book about how to make poultices teas, soaps, salves, things like that. And it's easier than you might think, and it's just going to be fun, and you're gonna know a little more about botany. One important thing that was emphasized in one of these books, in one of these herbalist books, is always be sure of the Latin name of something. There are a lot of colloquial names for different herbs and plants and flowers that can be sort of similar plant to plant, but if you know the Latin name of it, which is usually listed underneath the name we all know it by, you're not going to get anything mixed up because no two plants share the same Latin name. So just something to go away with. So again, that magic number, 615.321. So we hope you will come here to the library. You can always call 312-READ if you have questions about anything at all. And um, we'll hook you up with something to get you growing. And so, please visit. As we said earlier, we have a huge collection of gardening, plant, cacti, medicinal uh, books in our collection throughout the four libraries, and you will find something that will suit your needs. Thank you for coming and joining us on Get Lit this week. Thank you.